Now, my guest today is someone who I met early in my role as superintendent at Wesley Mission. For more than four decades, uh, Lee Hatch has done just about everything in media and the news arena, starting as a journalist, selected to anchor the nightly news for a major network in Australia, to many, and, and working at Sky News and, and different things today. Uh, look, it's a delight to welcome you, Lee. It's always great to see you, Keith. Everything but singing. Oh, He's right. been threatening to get me to sing on this Well, program. we're going to do that in a I've moment. I've resisted that. The, musici <laughs> the musicians will come from behind the curtains. <laughs> like, oh. It'll be a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Many people listening to the conversation will know something about your work. Yes. Uh, that standout moments in your career? Because there's one very, very big one. That you can't, yeah, you well, I know that one. Yeah. It was the one that happened really early in my career. I yeah. had probably been a cadet for just over 18 months in radio. Mm. I was appointed as the Macquarie Network's Canberra correspondent and began work in Canberra on Budget Day 1975. Mm -hmm. And those who know their political history will know that that was actually day one of the so-called constitutional mm -hmm. crisis, mm -hmm. which then led to Gough Whitlam being sacked on the 11th of November. And that slightly bewildered, ruffled, bearded individual down the left-hand front there is, you. is me. And I always have to add, oh, it's not photoshopped. I actually was there. Yeah. It was and, the most and, amazing. And it's the, the speech every Australian knows, yeah. isn't it? Well, yeah. may they, they all know. It was interesting. <laughs> David Smith, the guy in the middle, who yes. was the Governor-General's yes. official secretary, announcing the proclamation dissolving Parliament so election could be held. Mm. He ended his speech by saying, God save the Queen. Mm. Then Gough grabbed the microphone and said... Well, may we say... I, I, you know, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's, that's obviously the context that's in right. which that he makes said, sense. That's right. He said, well, may we say God save the Queen and everyone knows how it finishes. Yeah. <laughs> and what some of the other roles that you filled? Because that was just a way in other things. I, was, I worked for a long time with the Seven Television Network. Mm. I was their European correspondent, mm. living and working out of London through Eastern and Western Europe for mm. a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I was uh, Seven's chief Olympic correspondent going through the Atlanta Olympics and in the end uh, 2000 games in Sydney, right through the very early days of the bid for the year 2000 yeah, yeah. games. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's a, I count it a great privilege mm. uh, living through what we now call the golden years mm. of uh, broadcast mm. journalism because it's a, it's a lot, lot tougher gig now. Now it's changed a lot, but yeah. you're still active in media in some ways. What, what, what are some of the things you do now? Well, I'm, I'm more freelance, actually. Yeah. I, I produce and direct video. Mm. Um, I love directing. It's something new to me. Mm. Uh, and after you go uh, through the experiences that I've had, you learn a lot about what it is to be a presenter and you can bring out the best in people. I coach in media training and presentation skills mm. And uh, I podcast for a range of clients. Mainly and, and the Christian faith means a great deal to you, Lee. Yeah, yeah. Or, or do, you, do you find you're able to help Christians in, in, the, in the area of media? I've mentored lots of people, actually, mm. Mm. Uh, Christian and not, but some of them Christian, mm. uh, and tried to make sense of the business to them. Mm. I was very fortunate. I can only say that this was part of a grander plan, mm -hmm. that from very early, like when I was 19... I was in charge of my gig, mm. went on to be a news editor, news mm. director, mm. program director, bureau chief, and it wasn't until my early 30s that I came back into a newsroom. And by then I was able to kind of stick up for myself on issues like the truth. But for young people getting into that business with uh, a framework of Christian faith, it, it can be a really tough place mm. to be, especially mm. now. Mm. What's the biggest challenge for a Christian in media? I think on the issue of truth, I, I think uh, that, that extends far beyond uh, journalism today. It extends into politics, it extends into corporate life, even our relationships with one another, because if we don't have truth, it may sound ironic coming from a journalist, I grant you, mm. but without tr truth between the two of us, if I can't trust that you're telling me the truth, we've actually got nothing so other times, this is a tricky question, but it's probably right to ask, has the, has the Christian faith got in the way of your career at times? No. In, in some ways it has, because I've, I've made specific, numbers of specific and sometimes costly decisions mm. not to go in a direction mm. where I could have. Mm. I could have achieved more, I could have earned more, certainly. Mm. But I thought, I just couldn't do that. Mm. I couldn't... I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't walk in and, and be the same person that I am away from this business 
in that particular job. I, I just want to be the same person wherever I am. Mm. So there have been decisions that I've made, and as I said, costly decisions, sometimes that I become irrelevant and, and remain a relevant father and husband. I've got four wonderful kids, five grandsons, that's with a sixth grandson on the way. Oh, that's good. And I the relationships. Got eight. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch up. <laughs> and, and the relationships we have with yeah. them yes. have made those decisions sure. just the best decisions that I've made. Yes, in absolutely. My life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sometimes people say to me, you know, what are your children doing? I can say, oh, well, one's a lawyer, one's a... Do but I say, they don't rob banks. They're decent people. Oh, no, no, Isn't no. that what family life's all yeah, about? Yeah, and, you know, and, yeah. and you've got a daughter that follows you in media as well. Yes, she is. Yeah. And I'm, sure I'm a very proud dad. Now, before I finish up, Lee, I'd like to ask you this kind of question. If someone was listening to us, just nosing in this, this morning into what we're... Uh, and they're Christian and they're thinking about going into media, what would you say to them? be able to say a lot. It's tough. It's tougher now to break in than it was in my early life. It can be a wonderful, exhilarating business to be part of. Tougher though, more and more on less and less. You'd have to be a patient person. You'd have to be a persistent person, fierce persistence. Mm. I'd also say if they're Christian, you're not paid to be an evangelist at work. Absolutely. Though, in time, your light will shine. Mm. And likely over a much longer period than I think many frameworks of evangelism mm. give us a chance to. And to parents of young people who are keen to pursue such a career? <laughs> I think my parents were, were quite worried, though more worried that I was going to be an actor, actually. That was their main concern. But they went on to be... Or a singer. Or a singer. <laughs> we'll get back to you on that. Um, they, they went on to be proud of, of what yeah. I achieved and the, and the place that I had in the industry. It was, um, it's a great career. Well, Lee, thanks for your friendship over the years that, so we've, that we've enjoyed, Carol and myself personally. It's always great to see you. Bless you in all that you seek to do. Thank you for joining us today on the Pleasure. show. Thank you.